Sarah, I wonder how such a refined doll like that got mixed up in the mission dodge. She is a beautiful doll, all right, with 100% eyes. But how can someone waste all their time doing good? How can they make any money that way? Maybe she owns a piece of the mission. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Betty Southstreet. Harry the horse, how are you? 
You know Nicely Nicely Johnson? Yeah, how goes it? Nicely Nicely, thank you. Tell me, what about Nathan Detroit? Has he got a place for the crap game? We don't know yet. The heat is on. He's still looking for a place. Well, you tell him I'm loaded and looking for action. I just acquired 5,000 tomatoes. 5,000 bucks? Where'd you acquire it? I cannot tell a lie. I collected the reward on my father. Everybody is looking for action. Lieutenant Brannigan! Why, Mr. Saltry, it's Lieutenant Brannigan of the New York City Police Department. A pleasure. Any of you guys seen Nate Detroit? Yeah, uh, which Nathan Detroit is uh, that? I mean, the Nate Detroit was running a floating crap game around here and getting away with it by moving it to a different location every night. And uh, why are you telling us this? Oh, your honor. I am telling you this because I know you two bums work for Detroit, rustling up customers for his crap game. We do? Yeah. Oh. Well, you can tell him for me. I know that right now he is out there running around trying to find a spot, but nobody's going to give him a spot because they all know that Brannigan is breathing down their neck. Oh, Nathan, you better look out. Fellas, I'm having I terrible trouble. Everybody's right scared. Lieutenant Lieutenant Brannigan. Brannigan. I can't tell you that. I was eating Brannigan, and I can't tell you. Anything wrong, Mr. Detroit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Lieutenant. I hope you don't think I was talking about you. There are other lousy Brannigans. Uh, Detroit, I have just been talking to you two associates about your crap game. I imagine you are having trouble finding a place. Well, the heat is on, as you must know from the fact that you now have to live on your salary. <sighs> Did you find a place? What does that cop want from me? What am I, a sex maniac? I merely run a crap game for the convenience of those who want a little action, in return for which I take a small cut. Is that a crime? Yeah. Nathan, did you find a place? Did you find a place for the game? Did I find a, did I find a place? Yes, I found a place. We are holding the crap game tomorrow night in the Radio City Music Hall. How are you going to fix the ushers? I tried all the regular places, the back of the cigar store, the funeral parlor. Nathan, you once said there was a chance in the Biltmore Garage. I was over to the Biltmore Garage, spoke to Joey Biltmore himself. He says he might let me use the place, if I give him a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks? In cash. He won't take my marker. Your marker's no good, huh? What do you mean? A marker ain't just a piece of paper that says I owe you $1,000, signed Nathan Detroit. A marker is like a pledge, which a guy can't welch on it. It's like not saluting the flag. My marker is as good as gold. Only Joey Biltmore don't think so. It don't seem possible. Me without a livelihood. Why, I have been running a crap game ever since I was a juvenile delinquent. Nathan, can't you do something? What can I do? I'm broke. I couldn't even buy Adelaide a present today. And you know what day today is? It is mine and Adelaide's 14th anniversary. Yeah? Yeah. We've been engaged 14 years. Nathan, concentrate on the game. The town's up to here with high players. The Greeks in town. Brandy Bottle Bates! Granting Slim! I know I could make a fortune, but where could I have the game? The Biltmore Garage wants a grand, but we ain't got a grand on hand. And they've now put a lock on the door of the gym at PS84. There's the stock room behind McCluskey's bar. But Mrs. McCluskey ain't a good scout. And things being how they are, the back of the police station is out. So the Biltmore Garage is the spot. But the 1,000 bucks we ain't got. Why, it's good old reliable. Okay, quiet.
Lending money, it's betting money. So why don't I bet him? Why don't I bet him a thousand bucks on something? You would bet with Sky Masterson? I ain't scared. I am perfectly willing to take the risk, providing I can figure out a bet on which there is no chance of losing. He likes crazy bets, like uh, which lump of sugar will a fly sit on, or uh, how far you can kick a piece of cheesecake. Cheesecake! Ooh, look. Run over to Mindy's restaurant and ask Mindy how many pieces of cheesecake he sold yesterday and also how many pieces of strudel. How much cheesecake, how much strudel? What do you want to know for? Just find out. Now you guys beat it. If Adelaide finds out I am running the crap game, she will never set foot on me again. <laughs> oh, hello, Nathan. Adelaide, pigeon. <laughs> you girls go ahead. Order me a tuna fish on rye and a chocolate sundae with tomato ketchup and mayonnaise. <laughs> we gotta get back to the hot box. You still rehearsing? Yeah, that slave driver Charlie, he's been working us all day long. Finally, I says to him, Charlie, I'm starving. I gotta get out of here and get something to eat. And he tells me, you don't wanna eat. You wanna sneak out and meet that cheap bum, Nathan Detroit. So what did you say to him? Well, I told him I'll meet whomever I want. Well, don't upset yourself. Uh, how's your cold? It's much better, thank you. Nathan, happy anniversary. A present for me? I hope you like it. A belt. Read the cord. Sugar is sweet and so is jelly, so put this belt around your belly. <laughs> That is so sweet. Uh, look, honey, about your present. Uh, I was going to get you a diamond wristwatch with gold band and two rubies on the side. Oh, Nathan, you see them? It's all right. I didn't. I'm sorry. It's okay. I kind of like it when you forget to give me presents. It makes me feel like we're married. Don't worry, honey. One of these days I'll be in the money and you'll have more mink than a mink. Nathan, darling, I could do without anything. Just so long as you don't start running that crap game again. The crap game? What an absurd thought. Twelve hundred cheesecake and fifteen hundred strudel. Huh? Yesterday, Mindy sold twelve hundred cheesecake and fifteen hundred strudel. This is good. More strudel than cheesecake. That's great. Nathan, what is this? Nothing, honey. Hey, any news yet? Uh, nothing yet, Harry. I'll let you know. Okay, Detroit. What's that about? Uh, his wife's having a baby. Why is he asking you? He's nervous. It's his first wife. <laughs> Look, Adelaide, uh, I'm expecting a fellow, and I know you're hungry. Nathan, are you trying to get rid of me? No! I just don't want your sandwich to get soggy. Fellas! 
Why don't you take Adelaide over to the drugstore, all right? You see, you got a cold, it's across the street, and there are a lot of open manholes around. <laughs> oh, Nathan, darling, you're so thoughtful. You're just the sweetest person. Goodbye. <laughs> Hey, Masterson! Glad to see you, Sky. Nathan, you old promoter, you. <laughs> How are you, Sky? You look great. Feel great, Nathan. Two wonderful weeks out in West Nevada. Beautiful place. Wonderful scenery, healthful climate, and I took them for 50 G's at Blackjack. 50 G's? Oh. Going to be in town long? No, I leave for Havana tomorrow. Havana? Yeah, you want to come with me? There's a lot of action down there. No, I got a lot of things to do. Uh, meantime, how about going over to Mindy's for a piece of cheesecake? Oh, they sell a lot of cheesecake. No, I'm not hungry. But tell me, how's Adelaide? Uh, still fine, fine. Uh, still dancing at the hot box. And I suppose one of these days you'll be getting married. We all gotta go sometime. But we can fight it, Nathan. The guys like us, we gotta remember. As pleasant as a doll's company may be, she must always take second place to aces back to back. Yeah, yeah, uh... Uh, tell me, you, uh, you hungry yet? Uh, maybe we go to Mindy's for a piece of cheesecake or a strudel or something. No, I think I'll go get the late results. Oh, uh, <clears throat> but you will admit that Mindy has the greatest cheesecake in the country? Yes, I'm quite partial to Mindy's cheesecake. Who ain't? <laughs> and yet there are some people who like Mindy's strudel. Uh, offhand, which do you think he sells more of, the cheesecake or the strudel? Well, I never gave it much thought. But if everyone's like I am, I would say Mindy sells much more cheesecake than strudel. For how much? What? <laughs> For how much? Why, Nathan, I never knew you to be a betting man. You always took your percentage off the top. Ah, for old times' sake, I thought I'd give you a little action. I will bet you a thousand bucks that yesterday Mindy sold more strudel than cheesecake. Nathan, let me tell you a story. Oh. When I was a young man about to go off into the world, my father says to me a very valuable thing. Says to me like this, son, the old guy says, I'm sorry I'm not able to bankroll you a very large start, but not having any potatoes to give you, I'm now going to stake you with some very valuable advice. One of these days in your travels, a man is going to come to you with a nice brand new deck of cards on which the seal is not yet broken. This man is going to offer to bet you that he can make the jack of spades jump out of that deck and squirt cider in your ear. But son, do not bet this man, for as surely as you stand there, you're going to wind up with an ear full of cider. Now, Nathan, I don't claim that you've been clocking Mindy's cheesecake. You too! However, that. if you're really looking for some action, I will bet you the same thousand that you do not know the color of the necktie you have on. <laughs> well? No bets! Blue! What a crazy color! Nathan, we took Adelaide to the drugstore! Don't bother me! Hiya, Sky. How's it with you, fellas? Not bad. Nicely, nicely, thank you. Nathan, we took Adelaide to the drugstore like you asked us to, and she said to don't forget to pick her up from the hot box after the show, and to don't be late. Yes, dear. I mean, yes. Yes, dear. This is husband talk if I ever heard it. Nathan, you are trapped. And Adelaide, you have the kind of girl who is most difficult to unload. Well, I don't want to unload her. I love Adelaide. And a guy without a doll, well, if a guy does not have a doll, who would holler at her? A doll is a necessity. Nathan, I'm not putting the rap on dolls. I'm just saying a guy should have them around when he wants them. And they're quite easy to find. Not dolls like Adelaide. Nathan, figuring weight for age, all dolls are the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then how come you ain't got a doll? How come you are going to Havana alone without one? I like to travel light. Besides, if I wish to take a doll to Havana with me, there's a large assortment available. Not high class dolls. Any doll. You name it. Any doll? And I name it? Would you bet on that? Would you bet a thousand bucks that if I name a doll, you will take her to Havana tomorrow? You got it. Cider in my ear.
way from end to end. Well, they do that every day. <sighs> do you take sinners here? Indeed we do, Sarah. Uh, how do you do? My name is Abernathy. Orvide Abernathy. Sky Masterson. What's wrong? What's the trouble? My heart is heavy with sin. Oh, you poor man. I've wasted my life in gambling and evil betting, and I've suddenly realized the terrible things betting can lead to. Agatha! Coffee. Uh, didn't I see you a little while ago on Broadway? Possibly. I've been wandering around trying to get up the courage to come here. And you're willing to give up gambling? Gladly. I would never have become a gambler at all had I not fallen in with evil companions always offering me sucker bets. Here you are, young man. Oh, thank you. <coughs> Makes me feel good just to talk to you people. You just go right on talking to Sister Sarah. You'll be all right. I'm glad that you found us. Uh, well, the Bible says, seek and you shall find. Oh, very good. I wish we could find more sinners like you. We're out every day trying. Well, perhaps you should try the nighttime. <coughs> How's that? As a former sinner, I happen to know that the best time to find sinners is between the hours of midnight and dawn. You might even try holding an all-night session against the devil. Oh, a very good suggestion indeed. Why, thank you, Brother Masters. You're welcome. This coffee is so good, I don't understand why it isn't a sin. <laughs> a fine old gentleman. I suppose he sort of looks after you? Uh, we look after each other. And I suppose if one of you goes someplace, the other goes along? Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, here are two pamphlets I'd like you to read. They will bring you a great deal of comfort. Hmm. And uh, there Thank is you. a... You're welcome. And there is a, a Thursday prayer meeting that I'm sure you will wish to attend. I'm sure. Uh, Miss Sarah, I hope you don't think I'm getting out of line. But it is so nice to see a beautiful doll, a nice-looking lady like you, sacrificing herself for the sake of others. Staying here in this place? Do you ever go anywhere else, travel or something? I would like to go to Africa. <laughs> well, that's a little far, but there's a lot of wonderful places just a few hours from New York by plane. Have you ever been in a plane? No. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, here is another pamphlet I think you should read. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, I'll need a lot of personal help from you. My heart is as black as two feet down a wolf's gullet. Well, I will be speaking at the Thursday prayer meeting. I need private lessons. Why don't we have dinner or something? I think not, Mr. Masterson. Sorry, I'm just blossoming under the warmth of your kindness. Hey, that's wrong. What's wrong? That's not Proverbs, it's Isaiah. It's Proverbs. Sorry, no peace be unto the wicked, Isaiah. Chapter 57, verse 22. Isaiah. Isaiah. There's two things been in every hotel room in the country, Sky Masterson and the Gideon Bible. I must have read the good book 10 or 12 times. You've read the Bible 12 times. What's wrong with the Bible? Besides, in my line of work, the strangest information frequently comes in handy. I once won a 5G's parlay, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Tell me, Mr. Masterson, why are you here? I told you. I'm a sinner. You're lying. Well, lying's a sin. Look, I'm a big sinner. If you get me, it's eight to five, the others will follow. You need sinners, don't you? We're managing. <laughs> Let's be honest. This place is laying an egg. Why don't you let me help you? I bet I could fill this place with sinners. I don't bet. I'll make you a proposition. When's this big meeting of yours, Thursday night? I guarantee to personally fill that meeting with one dozen genuine sinners. And I will also guarantee that they'll sit still and listen to you. And what's my end of the bargain? Have dinner with me. Why do you want to have dinner with me? I'm hungry. Here. Uh, what's this? Sky Masterson's marker for 12 sinners. You don't think it's good? Ask anybody in town. I owe you one dozen sinners. I'll see you at noon tomorrow for dinner. At noon? Well, it'll take us some time to get there. Well, to get where? to my favorite restaurant. And where is that? El Cafe Cubana in Havana. El Cafe Cubana in Havana? Where do you want to eat, Howard Johnson's? Havana? Sure, why not? The plane gets us there in five hours and back in the same night, and the food is great. I now realize, Mr. Gambler, that when you were describing the blackness of your heart, you didn't do yourself justice. And I now realize, Sister Sarah, no matter how beautiful a sergeant may be, 
She's still a Sarge. Uh, please go away. Why don't you change your pitch, Sarge? Come to the mission, one and all, except guys. I hate guys. I don't hate anybody. Except me. It is a comfort to know it's me personally and not all guys in general. It's nice to know that somewhere in the world there might be a guy who might appeal to the sergeant. I wonder what this guy would be like. He will not be a gambler. I'm not interested in what he will not be. I'm interested in what he will be. Well, don't worry. I'll know. For I've imagined every bit of Scarsdale Galahad, the breakfast eating Brooks Brothers type. Yes. And I shall meet him when my time is right. You've got the guy all figured out, huh? All figured out. Including what he smokes, all figured out. All figured again. In case you want to take a crack at the other cheek. Thank you. 
garage? Let me talk to Joey Biltmore. Who's this? Nathan Detroit. <laughs> this is Joey. What do you want? Joey, uh, I'm calling about the, uh, you know. The what? The crap game. What? The crap game. Uh, wait a minute. I got it. I got a customer. Well, hurry up, will ya? That'll be eight dollars. <laughs> What were you saying, Nate? The crap game! Shh, not over the phone! Suppose the cops are listening. I'm sorry. The dice tournament. Look, Joey, is it okay if I use your place tomorrow night? If I get a thousand bucks? I'll have it tomorrow. Then call me tomorrow. Look, Joey, if you are going to take that attitude, I will have the game someplace else. Then have the game someplace else. Where else can I have it? Joey. The dough is guaranteed. Would I lie to you? Yes. I'm getting the money from Sky Masterson. Oh? How do you know? It's a bet. I can't lose. I bet him he could not take a doll to Havana. Why couldn't he? Because she ain't the type of doll that goes to Havana. Where does she go? She don't go no place. That's why I know I'm going to win. Don't be so sure. It ain't a horse. It's a doll. But Joey... Nathan, there will be no crap games here unless I get my dough. In advance. Joey, you've known me a long time. That's why I want it in advance. Well, I can't talk no more. I gotta meet Adelaide at the hot box. Uh, just one thing. Could I at least tell the guys that the game is gonna be at your place? Not until I get my thousand bucks. Okay, you get it. Goodbye. Goodbye. I hope you get stabbed by a Studebaker.
Joey's neck. <laughs> And all his cars all red. Oh, Nathan, oh. hello. <laughs> hello, pie face. How are you, handsome? Fine. What do you got there? A book. A book. You're always reading books. You're becoming a regular bookie. Nathan, this is very interesting. The doctor gave it to me. I went to see him about my cold. How is your cold? It's the same. So the doctor asked me how long I had it, and I told him a long time. And I thought it was on account of my dancing with hardly any clothes on, which is what I usually wear. So the doctor told me to read this book because he said it might be due to psychology. You haven't got that, have you? Nathan, this is a psychology that tells you why girls do certain kinds of things. Oh, uh, would it tell you what kind of a doll would go for a certain kind of a guy which you wouldn't think she would do so? What do you mean? Uh, just for instance, uh, there are certain dolls which you can almost bet would not go for certain guys. Oh, Nathan, darling, no matter how terrible a fellow may seem, you can never be too sure some gal won't go for him. Take us. Yeah. Nathan, starting with next week, I'm going to be getting a raise. And with what I'll be making, I wondered, what do you think if we could finally get married? Well, well I mean, we're, we're going to, uh, you know, sooner or later. I know, Nathan. <laughs> But I'm starting to worry about my mother. Your mother? What about your mother? Well, Nathan, this is something I've never told you before. But my mother, back in Rhode Island, she thinks we're married already. Why would she think a thing like that? Well, I couldn't be engaged for 14 years, could I? People don't do that in Rhode Island. They all get married. Then why is it such a small state? Anyway, I wrote her I was married. Oh, you did, huh? Uh-huh. And then, after about two years... What, after about two years? We had a baby. You told your mother we had a baby? I had to, Nathan. Mother wouldn't have understood if I hadn't. What type baby was it? It was a boy. I named him after you, Nathan. Thank you. You're welcome. And, uh... Where is Nathan Jr. supposed to be now? Oh, he's in boarding school. I wrote mother he won the football game on Saturday. I wish I had bet on it. But Nathan, that's not all, Nathan. Don't tell me he has a little sister. All those years, Nathan, mother believes in big families. Just give me the grand total. Five. <laughs> Your mother must be a glutton for punishment. Well, anyway, Nathan, now that we're finally getting married, it won't be a lie anymore. Adelaide, how could you do such a thing to a nice old broad like your mother? But, Nathan, you don't even know my mother. <laughs> but I'll be meeting her sooner. What'll I tell her? What'll I tell her I did with the five kids, traded them to the Phillies or something? <laughs> what are we going to do? We could get married. But you don't just jump at the marriage like it was a kettle of fish. We ain't ready. I am ready. Nathan, what do you think I got in this box? Nathan, what do you think I got in this box? Sally's Wedding Shop. I can't guess. It is a wedding veil. I've had it for three years. <laughs> I won't show it to you because it's bad luck. Would you like to see it? It's bad luck. So you see, Nathan, darling, I've got the veil. Now all we need is a license and a blood test. A what? A blood test, it's the law. What a city! First they close my crap game, then they open my veins. Nathan, you're not planning on running your crap game again. Adelaide, how could you think such a thing? Why do you think I give it up? It's because I love you. And because I want us two to be the happiest married couple that there is in the whole world. Oh. <laughs> Anybody see a here? I don't think so. You. I'll date it up with Society Max tomorrow and he breaks it on account of your dopey crap game. Oh, honest Adelaide, I pity you. Oh, here it is. Adelaide, look, I'm down on my knees. Oh, get up! It reminds me of your crap game. <laughs> look, Adelaide, you're getting yourself upset. Look, we're gonna be all right. We love each other. We're gonna be married. I don't believe you anymore. But, but it's true. Look, you'll feel better tomorrow. All right, cheer up now. Come on. Let's see that old smile. That's you. 
Oh, that's my girl. Uh, <laughs> goodbye. Just missed it. You should have seen him. Sky was following Miss Sarah, and she gave him a look that would have cooled off a moose at mating time. Great, just so he don't take her to Havana. <laughs> Havana? He couldn't take this down from New Rochelle. Uh, so where's Nathan? You don't start lining up the game. I don't know. I suppose trying to see Adelaide. She's mad at him again. That Miss Adelaide always taking Nathan's mind off of honest work. Yes, it's too bad that a smart businessman like Nathan has to go and fall in love with his own fiance. Benny. That is his weakness, and we should be tolerant because I am told it is a worldwide weakness. Look! What's playing at the Roxy? I'll tell you what's playing at the Roxy. A picture about a Minnesota man so in love with a Mississippi girl, he sacrifices everything and moves all the way to Biloxi. 
That's what's playing at the Roxy. What's in the Daily News? I'll tell you what's in the Daily News. Story about a guy who won his wife a small ruby with what otherwise would have been his union dues. That's what's in the Daily News. What's happening all over? I'll tell you what's happening all over. Guy sitting home in front of a television set who once used to be something of a rover. That's what's happening all over. Love is a thing that has left them. And it looks like Nathan's just another victim. Yes, sir! When you see a guy reach for stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some When you spot a John waiting out in the rain, chances are he's insane as only a John can be for a Jew. When you meet a Kent, Paying all kinds of rent for a flat that could flatten the Taj Mahal. Call it sad, call it funny, but it's better than even money that the guys only do it for some dough. When you see a show saving half of his dough, you can bet they'll be making it for some dough. When a bum buys wine like a bum can afford, it's a cinch of the bum is under the of some little fraud. When you meet a bug lately out of the jug and he's still lifting platinum all your Call it hell, call it heaven It's a probable 12 to 7 that the guys only Really needed. 
but we're doing much better now. You've announced a meeting, but will anybody be here? Will anybody come? Pardon me, couldn't help overhearing. Sky Masterson, former senator. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? General, I wish to protest the closing of this mission. I believe Miss Sarah can do a lot of good here. I'm glad to hear you say so, but I'm not so certain. A dollar will get you 10. What? General, might I make a suggestion? Yes. Why don't you come to the big meeting tomorrow night and find out for yourself? Don't you think that would be a good idea? Well, if I thought the mission had a General, chance. General, I personally guarantee you one dozen genuine sinners. Hallelujah! 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 Okay, but where's the game? I'll tell you in a minute! Nathan, is it all set? Can I tell the guys that it's in the Biltmore garage? Not yet. I gotta wait for the money. Joey wants his dough first. But it's 11 o'clock. They won't stick around much longer. So sue me. I left nicely at my hotel to wait for the money from Sky. It'll be here. Oh. Where's the dough? It hasn't come yet. But I told you to wait for it! I had to get something to eat. I was feeling really faint. But get back to the hotel! And wait for the money from Sky, and don't come back here, even if you starve to death. Where's the game, Detroit? Hey, Harry the Horse, how are you, Harry? How are things in Brooklyn? Detroit, if there is no game, tell us, and we shall seek elsewhere for our entertainment. Hey, take it easy, Harry. I hope, Detroit, that you will not spoil our evening inasmuch as I happen to be entertaining a very prominent guest. I think you might have heard of him. I would like you to meet Big Julie from Chicago. Oh, why? How do you do, Big Julie? <coughs> Welcome to our fair city in which, as you know, uh, the heat is on. Uh, but just be patient and you'll get some action. What do you say, Big Julie? Should we stick around, or should we blow? I came here to shoot crap. Let's shoot crap. Joe? Nathan? Nathan? If there is no crap game tonight, I am sure Big Julie will be considerably displeased. And Big Julie does not like to be displeased, as you can find out from those who at one time or another displeased him. Although I will admit, it is most difficult to find such people as they are no longer around and about. Now, Harry, you don't think I would be so rude as to displease a gentleman like Big Julie here, do you? Big Julie, believe me when I tell you that when Nathan, whoo, Nathan Detroit, uh, when, when Nathan Detroit, uh, when Nathan Detroit arranges something, you can be sure that it gets arranged. Oh. Well, well, an interesting gathering indeed. The cream of society, Angie the Ox, Society Max, Rusty Charlie, <gasps> Liver Lips Louie, and Harry, Harry the Horse, all the way from Brooklyn. Oh, but pardon me, I I'm very bad with names, but your face looks familiar to me. Mind telling me where you're from? East Cicero, Illinois. Oh, what do you do there? I'm a scoutmaster. <laughs> well, don't ever help my mother across the street. <gasps> Lovely. This looks like the male chorus from Blossom Time. What is the occasion? Well, we, uh, uh it's a party. Indeed, what kind of a party? It's a bachelor dinner! Nathan's getting what? married! What? Ah, oh, that is correct, Lieutenant. It's a bachelor dinner. Nathan's getting married. Yes, sir! For he's, he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody cannot deny. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Nathan, I'm so thrilled. Why didn't you tell me? It was a surprise! Well, 
when I saw you standing here with all these fine gentlemen, I never thought it was a bachelor dinner. I thought it was... Oh, yes, it's a bachelor dinner. It's a bachelor dinner. Yes, sir, a bachelor dinner. To think, after 14 years, I'm finally going to become Mrs. Nathan Detroit. Time certainly does fly. Tell me, Nathan, when is the happy day? When will it be, Nathan? Well... Nathan, these good fellas were kind enough to throw you a bachelor dinner. You could at least tell them the wedding date. Well, we need time for a license and a blood test. Oh, gee, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get married tomorrow night, right after the show at the hot box? Adelaide, we need time for a license. You could elope. What? You could drive down to Maryland. Uh, what's the name of that town? Uh, Pimlico? No. <laughs> Not Pimlico. Elton. Nathan, they will marry you right away. They don't even ask for a blood test. Ain't that unhealthy? Nathan, that's a great idea. Elope, I'll lend you my getaway car. Oof, my Buick. <laughs> Nathan, let's do it. Well, what the hell? Hey, congratulations, Nathan. <laughs> congratulations. My congratulations as well, Nathan. And I only hope there is nothing in heredity. Gee, I have so many things to do before we elope. You'll be at this show tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, have a table reserved and I'll be dressed up in whatever you will open. Oh, I'm so happy I want to wire my mother. Only what will I wire her? Send a telegram and date it back. Well, I better wait until after we have five children. It won't take long. <laughs> Nathan, you are indeed a lucky fella. A most beautiful doll indeed. Don't you agree, Big Julie? Tell me, how long you known the doll? Fourteen years. Let you crap. Nathan, you better find a place. How can I? The money from Sky ain't come yet. Maybe it won't come. Maybe he took the doll to Havana. He couldn't have. How could he? She couldn't have gone. <laughs>
vacation in Cuba. Come on. Where to? To see the oldest. Don't miss the dungeons where prisoners were thrown to the sharks. Sounds like a million laughs. Here is buried Christopher Columbus. At least he's laying down. as a preservative. You know, this would be a wonderful way to get children to drink milk. <laughs>
take it easy, Slugger. It's over, and you're still champ. Are you all right? Am I all right? Ask me, how do I feel? Ask me now. Taking you back. Well, you're no gentleman. Look, a doll like you shouldn't get mixed up with a guy like me. It's no good. I'm no good. You know why I took you to Havana? I made a bet. That's how you met me in the first place. I made a bet. Well, how else would you expect a girl to get to meet a gambler? Come on. What? No! I gotta think what's best for you. You talk just like a missionary. <laughs> Miss Adelaide. You know Miss Sarah. Oh, how do you know her? 
you do? Glad to meet you. You know, Sky, we're getting, uh, we're eloping, actually, at the hot box tomorrow night, Nathan and I. Well, good luck. Thanks. I'm going to love being a housewife. I tried all the other rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Adelaide sure seems happy. Well, she's in love. Yeah, I guess so. What time is it? I don't know, four o'clock? This is your time of day, isn't it? I've never been up this late before. How do you like it? So peaceful. Wonderful. You're finding out something I've known for quite a while. My time of day is the dark time. A couple of deals before dawn When the street belongs to the cap And the janitor with the map And the grocery clerks are all gone When the smell of the rainwash pavement Comes up clean and fresh and cold and the street lamp light fills the gutter with gold. That's my time of day. My time of day. And you're the only doll I've ever wanted to share it with me. Obadiah. Obadiah Masterson, that's my real name. You're the first person I've ever told him to. I've never been in love before. Now all at once it's you. It's you. Sarah? 
I've been to Cuba. You're even more tired than I am. Strange things in my time, but this is the first time I've ever seen a floating crap game going on full blast in a mission. A crap game? Sarah, you know I had nothing to do with this, don't you? This wouldn't have happened if, if I hadn't. Sarah. No, I should have never gone with you. It was wrong. No, it wasn't. You went to help the mission. Did I? Well, I see you tomorrow. Everyone's welcomed at the mission. That's not what I mean. It's no good, Sky. You said it yourself, it's no good. What the hell kind of doll are you anyway? I'm a mission doll!
Monsieur Masterson, will you be joining Monsieur Detroit's party tonight? Is he here? No, Monsieur. Monsieur Detroit has not been here all evening. Bring me a Ryan soda. Hiya, Sky. Have you seen Nathan? I have a message for him from, from Miss Adelaide. What's the message? Where is Nathan? Well, it's like this, see. Uh, Nathan went to Pittsburgh to visit his aunt who suddenly took a nail with... Uh... A rare tropical disease? Hey, that ain't bad. So listen, Nathan told me to come here to tell him something very important. Nicely, what's the message? Where is Nathan? Well, the crap game is still going on. Since last night? <laughs> Big Julie, being a large loser, does not wish the game to terminate. In fact, he is most insistent. So we find a new place and the game goes on. <laughs> Where's the game? Why, you looking for some action? No. I left my marker with somebody nicely and I'd kind of like to clean I it gotta up. I gotta go. I'll meet you outside. What about Nathan's message? Oh, yes, Miss Adley. Nathan went to Pittsburgh to visit a rare tropical ant. Goodbye. <laughs> Nailed it. What? I don't understand, Sky. Nathan asked to come here. We're eloping to get married tonight. Is it the crap game again? You know Nathan. Why does it surprise you? But he promised to change. 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 Why is it the minute you dolls get a guy that you like, you take him right in for alterations? Oh, what about you men? Why can't you marry people like other people do and live normal like people? Have a home with wallpaper and bookends. No, Miss Adelaide. What do you mean, no? Guys like Nathan Detroit and, yeah, Sky Masterson, we don't belong in a life like that, so when dolls get mixed up with us, it's no good. <coughs> no good. I'll see you in a couple of months. Where are you going? I don't know, Las Vegas, maybe? I've got a ticket on the late plane. Will you see Nathan before you go? Maybe. Well, tell him I never want to talk to him again and have him call me here. 
Look, why don't you get another guy? I can. I love Nathan. Wait till you fall for somebody. You'll find out. Yeah. In other words, just from sitting alone at a table reserved for two. Someday they'll be praying there. Even a man like Sky Masterson, he came seeking refuge. He came seeking me. Did you know that? Are you kidding? I knew that the minute he started picking on you. But I didn't know you were going to get stuck on him. I'll get over it. What do you want to get over it for? It isn't pneumonia. The man I love will not be a gambler. But if you love him... He will not be a gambler. Sarah, dear. I've always looked after you. I only want you to be happy.
Good evening, Miss uh, Brother Arvine. How goes the soul saving? Tonight's the big meeting, isn't it? Yeah, it's supposed to be. The general's coming, and she's The general's expecting... a tough doll, eh? Yeah, very few people will be there. In fact, no one. I don't think Mr. Masterson is interested in our troubles, Grandfather. We have to get going. Sarah, you've forgotten something. But being a gambler, I never forget things like this. You hold my marker for 12 sinners tonight. Thank you, Mr. Masterson, but I'd rather you forgot about it. I cannot welch a marker. <clears throat> Mr. Masterson, last night the mission was filled with your friends. Let's just say we're even. Well, if you don't pay off on that marker, I'll tell the whole town you're a dirty welcher. <laughs> Nicely. Where's the crap game? Well, Sky, it's about a ten minute walk. Which way? This way. <laughs> <laughs>
We had enough. Yeah, yeah. come on, let's, let's go yeah. on. Yeah. You see, visually, the boys are slightly fatigued with weariness. Slightly. Having been shooting crap for quite a while now, namely 24 hours. I do not care who is tired. I am out 25 G, so nobody leaves. I begin to see the logic of Big Julie. It is not that he is a big loser, it is just that he prefers to win. Right, Big Julie? Give me the dice. I'm rolling 500. Take 200. Uh... Dead! If you do not shut up, Big Julie will arrange the other head. <laughs> And it's a one and a one. Snake eyes, you lose. And $50 for the house. But the dice are still yours and your luck is bound. Shut up. Another five. Tell 200 more. Oh. And here comes that big lucky roll. Ha. And it's snake eyes again. Tough luck, Big Julie. Well, that cleans me. But I ain't through yet. I will now play yeah. on credit. Credit? Uh, you see, Big Julie, the boys are tired. Now, of course, me personally, I am fresh as a daisy. And I will play with you. Me? Yeah, you. You've been raking down out every pot. You bust up by now quite a bundle. Well, being I assume the risk, it is only fair I should assume some dough. Detroit, I'm gonna roll you willy or nilly. If I lose, I will give you my marker. And if I lose? You will give him cash. Let me hear from Big Julie. <laughs> you will give me cash. Now I heard it. Here's my marker. Put him your dough. Is anything wrong? No, no. I owe you $1,000 signed X. How is it you can write 1,000, but you cannot write your signature? Oh, I was good in arithmetic, but I stunk in English. Well, this will put you through Harvard. I'll roll a thousand, and to change my luck, I will use my own dice. <laughs> your own dice! <laughs> and they're made especially for me in Chicago. Big Julie, you cannot interpolate Chicago dice in a New York crap game. That is a breach of etiquette! Hey, show me where it says that in Emily Post! Not that I wish to seem petty, but could I have a look at those dice? What, oh, but these... These ain't got no spots on them, they're blank! I had the spots removed for luck, but I remember where the spots formerly were. <laughs> You are going to roll blank dice and call them from remembering where the spots formerly was? Why not? I see no reason. Yeah, he makes a great point. He's got a point. Ha! Ha! A five! And a five! My point is ten. I still got a chance. Ten Z, come again, Z. I wish he'd fall down on his end, Z. Ha! Ha! A ten, I win! A ten? Yeah, a six and a four. Which is a six and which is a four? Either way. <laughs> now, I'll roll you for 2,000. Get it up. I just remembered. I'm getting a loaf uh, tonight. I gotta go see Adelaide. Get it up I... the 2,000. How about giving some of the other chaps some fun? Oh, yeah, 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 with you. 2,000. Uh, seven, I win. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> Out, Detroit. I will give you a chance. What do you mean? I'm rolling you for one dollar. <laughs> I'll take all of it. <laughs> yeah. oh, how do you like that? Snake eyes, I lose. For this, I gotta bend down. Now I'll give you a chance. I'm rolling you for 3,000. Three Gs? I'm rolling you for three Gs. Put it down there. Wouldn't it be more convenient if I just put it in your pocket? Get it up. Goodbye. Ha! Oh. <laughs> 11, I win. <laughs> that cleans me. Uh, now, I will play with you guys. Come on, you had your Wait a minute! I gotta have a 
chance to get even. I will roll you with my dice. All right, Detroit, that's fair. <laughs> what are you gonna use for money? I will give you my marker. And you want Big Julie to put up cash? Nathan done it? Sure I done it. What kind of a deal is this anyway? Take it easy, Nathan! Him with his no spot dice. Somebody ought to knock the spots over him! Nathan, don't make Big Julie have to do something to you. Yeah, I'm on my vacation. Go ahead! Shoot me! Put me in cement! At least I would know where I am! Here I risk my neck for a crap game. I even promised to get married on account of it. So look how I wind up broke in a sewer. Believe me, my tough friend from Chicago, there is nothing that you could do to me that would not cheer me up. Here they are, Sky. Hi, fellas. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi, Sky. Well, fresh blood. <laughs> You're looking for some action? Not at the moment. But I would like to talk to some of you guys. Oh, we ain't talking. We're shooting crap. Yeah. I'm asking only for one minute. Okay. We are shooting crap. It's about Miss Sarah Brown's mission. <laughs> oh. Say, who is this guy anyway? That's the fellow I was telling you about. Took the mission down to Havana. Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> Look, fellow. Why don't you go back to your praying tomato? You're slowing up the action around here. If you're looking for some action, would you care to make a small wager on a proposition? What proposition? Am I right-handed or left-handed? <laughs> no, how would I know a thing like that? Well, I'll give you a clue. Kindly return this to Sears Roebuck. Look, guys. Tonight, in Miss Sarah Brown's mission at 409 West 49th Street, there's to be a big prayer meeting. And I promised I would provide to them some sinners. And when it comes to sinning, most of you guys are high up among the paint cards. Thank you. Hey, I don't want to spend no evening in a hallelujah joint. Well, if you won't do it as a favor to me, do it as a favor to yourselves. I guarantee you the air in the mission smells cleaner than the air down here. And maybe it wouldn't hurt you to learn something other than the odds on how to make a four the hard way. Hey, yeah, you've been reading the Bible too much. <laughs> so what if I have? Maybe the Bible don't read as lively as a scratch sheet, but at least it's twice as accurate. Yeah. Well, I tried. I'll see you around, Nathan. Okay, Sky. Oh, uh, about that Havana business? I regret I temporarily do not have the thousand to pay you. You don't have to pay me, Nathan. You won. But, but I thought you took Miss Sarah to Havana. You thought wrong. Sure, I will have back in five. Come on, Big Julie! I have now got the dough to roll you, only we're gonna use my dice. Nothing going! With them dice, he cannot make a pass to save his soul. What did you say? I says, with those dice, he cannot make a pass to save his soul. Well, maybe I can make a pass to save his soul. And his. Uh, and his. Uh, and yours, too. I am going to roll the dice. And I will bet each of you 1,000 against your souls. 1,000 cash against a marker for your souls. If I win, you all show up at the mission tonight. Is it good? $1,000? Yeah, let me get this. If you lose, we each get 1,000 bucks. But if you win, we got to show up at this Mission Dolls Cabaret. If I win, you show up at the Save a Soul mission tonight. One meeting. Okay, by me. Me too. Sounds good to me too. You too, Nathan. One thousand against your soul. Me? I don't even know if I got one. You got one someplace. How do you spell soul? S O. It was rhetorical. All right, guys, put down your markers. All right. <laughs> ready or not, here I come, pretty boy. <laughs> Give me the dice. Right. Give me Ruth. Well, come on, you gonna roll already? Hey, what's the matter, Sky? You turning chicken? <laughs> you see me roll for a hundred G's. But I've got a lot more than dough riding on this one. They call you Lady Luck. But there is room for doubt. At times you have. A very unladylike way of running out You're on this date with me 
the pickings have been lush. And yet before this evening is over, you might give me the brush. You might forget your manners. You might refuse to stay. Never get out of my sight Stick with me, baby I'm the fella you came in with Luck be a lady Luck be a lady Luck be a lady to my daughter for nearly 12 years, 
uh, but I feel like I know you from Adelaide's letters, and in my mind's eye, I can see you as you go down to work every morning at seven. What a responsibility it must be to be the assistant manager of an A&P. I'm not even the manager. I was gonna promote you for Christmas. I know how hard you have to work to take care of your family. Adelaide and the five children and the one that's on the way. Mother wanted to visit, so I had to tell her that. Don't she know I can't have six kids on what they pay me at the A&P? I am very proud to have you as a son-in-law. You are a good man, and I know you will always take care of Adelaide. I feel like a heel. Look, Nathan, darling, it's okay. We can still make everything all right. It's not even midnight yet. It's five minutes to 12. Let's elope now. Okay, Adelaide. <laughs> no, I can't. Well, why not? Come on, Nathan, he'll be late. Nathan, why can't we elope now? Uh, because, uh, well, I gotta go to a prayer meeting. You, it's true. You promised me this, you promised me that, you promised me everything under the sun. Then you give me a kiss and you grab your hat. You're off to the races again when I think of the time gone by. Adelaide, Adelaide. Then I think of the way I tried. Adelaide. I can honestly die. Call a lawyer and sue me, sue me. What can you do me? I love you. A holler and hate me, hate me, go ahead, hate me. The I best years of my life, I was a fool to give to all you. Right already. I'm just a no good Nick. All right already, it's true. So new, so sue me, sue me. What can you?
General, I know what's wrong. I'm wrong. I, I have tried to speak to these people, but my words can't reach them. I think it would be best if I... Sorry, here you are. One dozen or more assorted sinners. Sorry we didn't have time to clean them up. Uh, won't you gentlemen sit down? Now, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Sit down, all of you! I would like to welcome you gentlemen to the Save the Soul mission. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. I would like to remind you that this is a mission and not Roseland, and I would suggest you don't indulge in any unpleasantness. Since I am required to depart for points west tonight, I'm appointing Nathan Detroit Major Domo in my place. Nathan, anybody does not conduct themselves according to Hoyle will answer to Sky Masterson personally. And that means in person. What a remarkable young man. So remember that, you guys. Brother Abernathy, your dice. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, we are honored tonight. The meeting will be conducted by the head of our organization, General Cartwright. It is wonderful to see our mission graced by the presence of so many evil-looking sinners. <laughs> now, who would like to testify? Who would like to get the ball rolling by giving testimony? Betty, give testimony. I ain't no stool pigeon. Come, brothers, I know it is difficult, but let one of you give testimony to the sin that is in his heart. Betty! Tell him what a bum you are! Betty! Uh, I used to be a bad guy and a gambler, but I ain't going to do it no more. I thank you. There! Don't you feel better now? Am I right? Anyone else? Big Julie! <laughs> Well, I used to be bad when I was a kid, but I have gotten straight as I can prove by my record. 33 arrests and no conviction. Hey, 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 hey. That's impressive. Harry! Oh, no! Harry the horse! Well, like when Sky was rolling us for our souls, and I. I beg your pardon. Sky Masterson, he rolled us $1,000 against our souls. That's why we're here. I don't think I understand. I do, General. What he means is that the only reason why they are here is because Mr. Masterson won them in a dice game. Yeah, yeah. 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 pretty much. How wonderful! This whole meeting, the result of gambling, it shows how good can come from evil. Sergeant Sarah, you have done remarkable work. Oh, hey. hasn't she, though? Hey, 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 hey! I ain't finished my testimony yet! My sense is that when Sky rolled us, I wish we would have won the thousand instead of having to come here. But now that I'm here, I still wish it. Oh. Anybody else? We will now hear testimony from Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson. Brother, nicely, nicely, Johnson. Get up, you fat water buffalo. Well, um, uh, it happened to be kind of funny, um, like a dream. That's it, a dream. Tell us in your own words. I dreamed last night. I got on the boat to heaven, and by some chance, I had brought my dice along, and there I stood. And I hollered, someone faint me. But the passengers, they knew right from wrong. For the people said, sit down, sit down to rock the boat. People said, sit down, sit down to rock the boat. And by some chance 
time in a mission. I guess that's why they call them Holy Rollers. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Sarah. I also have a confession to make, and I gotta get it off my chest. We did shoot crap here last night, and for that, we are very sorry. Ain't we, boys? Ain't we, boys? Oh, yeah. I'm really sorry. But I did another terrible thing. I made a bet with a certain guy that he could not take a certain doll on a trip. And for this, I should not have done, but it caused no harm as I won the bet. You won the bet? Sure. The guy told me he did not take the doll. Well, that makes me feel better. Hallelujah. 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 Gentlemen, we will now sing number 244. Follow the fold. Uh, follow the fold and stay no more. Stay no more. Stay no more. Put down the bottle and we'll say no more. Follow, follow the
Uh, Natalie, the well-known fiance. Oh, uh, yes. Um, when are you getting married? The 12th of never. Oh, uh, well, I I'm so sorry. I didn't even get close enough to the church to get left at it. Gee, what do I ever tell my mother? Oh, well, just tell your mother that your engagement is broken. I'm sure she'll understand. I'm afraid that might confuse her. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell her Nathan is dead and then see to it. <laughs> oh, uh, well, you mustn't carry hate in your heart, Miss Adelaide. Try to be forgiving and understanding, and the pain will go away. In the Bible, it tells us in Isaiah. Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah. Oh, you got a boyfriend named Isaiah. <laughs> oh. No, Isaiah was an ancient prophet. Oh, don't tell me. No one cries like that over an old guy. Whoever it is, you got it bad. You know, when I saw you with Sky Masterson oh, the other night. <laughs> You're not in love with Sky. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. I thought I hated him. I thought I hated Nathan, too. I still hate him. That's love. Adelaide, can men like Sky ever change? For 14 years, I tried to change Nathan. I always thought how wonderful it would be if he were different. I've sat and pictured him by the hour. Nathan, my Nathan, in a little home in the country. Happy. Gee, wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it? With only sky. But they can't change. Well, a few moments ago at our prayer meeting, there were of gamblers there that acted as though maybe they could change. I know, but you know, gamblers at your prayer meeting? Was Nathan Detroit there? Oh, well, that name does sound familiar. A tall fella with a cute mustache. I think so. Well, how do you like that, rat? Just when he ought to be lying, he's telling the truth. I'm glad I'm through with him. And you should be glad you're through with Sky, too. I am. What are we, crazy or something? At Watermakers in Saxon Clines, a lesson I've been taught. You can't get alterations on a dress you haven't bought. At any vegetable market from Borneo to Nile, you mustn't squeeze the melon till you get the melon whole. You simply gotta gamble, you get no Why not? Why 
Ethan, come on, we're waiting for you. Just a minute, I'm waiting on the lieutenant. Here you are, lieutenant. Nathan, close up the newsstand. We're getting married. Look, is this wedding gonna take place or ain't it? I paid half a buck for this Miss Santa Cruz. Nathan, come on! Gee, Adelaide, you picked the busiest time of the day. Let's go, where's the wedding? Holy smoke! What's the matter? I didn't get a place for the wedding. Oh. Nathan! Hey, Nathan, how about the Billboard Garage? <laughs> Life is one big crap game and the devil's using loaded dice. Where's the crap game? Yeah. Brother Masterson. Yes, Brother Detroit? Is it okay if we use your mission to get married, uh, Adelaide and I? Certainly. I married Brother Masterson and Sister Sarah. Glad to do the same for you. Nathan, congratulations. I lay you eight to five, you'll be very happy. Well, what Obadiah means is... Obadiah! Well, he wishes you every happiness and so do I. Oh, thank you very much. I know Nathan and I are going to be very happy. We're going to have a little home in the country, and Nathan will be sitting there beside me every single night. Gesundheit. Thank you, Sia Khan. The stars in the sky. And get back to Sia Guys and dolls, opening night. One more time, please. 